flashes, that's a really nice use, nice value for the steadfast presence. Yeah, that is really, really good value. I mean, it, it, I don't think there's any pick that makes you think FlyQuest can win 5v5 later, uh, as far as just what has already been drafted here. Yeah. They can get some scaling. It uh, does look like they're they're considering the Victor. Victor gonna get right. locked in, so you know, over and over and never interacting with the Nami Lucian, you're winning that lane by Yeah, that's lot. great. Yeah. Because you are the Terry Lulu. Later yeah. on in the game, you're feeling fantastic. Uhi's making a rotation towards mid now. Remember, Vikma still has his flash, but now he's gonna be shuffled back. And with Huhi ready to go here, I don't know if there's any way out for Vikla. A little bit more damage is all they needed. It's first blood over to Lulu. Nicely done. I'm not sure if Corey could have got it or not, but who he commits the flash, commits the heal. Nice roam. I just think they weren't expecting it because it's a Lulu, right? It's it's kind of one of those funny things where the fact that River was showing. Bill, you can see Winsome and Prince going up here into the top side now to respond to the lane swap committed from Golden Guardians. They wanted to go up top, get that last plate if they could before it fell. Impact is defending, but now he's teleported bottom. Licorice doing the same. So those two are going to be pretty synced up there, yep. matching one another in bot lane. Exactly. I mean, FlyQuest doesn't want to let Stixay out of this this 2v2, right? Because no. Stixay was doing fine, but now it's a completed item, and there's no completed item on the other side. You know, he went for tier 2 boots early, so Prince is at a really strong point. He's going to try to chunk down Hui and set up for a dive. Can speak a go. Oh, nicely done from Prince there. Going in and immediately sidestepping himself, as that's going to be FlyQuest picking up two. But the response from Golden Guardian seeks something. Oh. Nice. The soldier gets him over the wall, and Gory gets the kill. Now Speak is going to try to get away, but it's a double kill back to the Emperor, and Golden Guardians will not be caught sleeping. That is massive for Golden Guardians here. Yes, they're able to pull off the dive on the side of FlyQuest, get some kills, but it is Gory coming in, cleaning up both those kills, and congratulations to Huhi funding here. They're sending members up. You can look at the minimap. They're trying to move up. They're trying to TP to answer. Okay. They see the teleport, and Golden Guardians immediately decide against well risking the dive. They do not want to be caught, but Prince is going to try to catch him anyway. Forces the flash out of the Golden Guardian support as Huhi runs away. Sticks a shortly behind him. Prince just dumps the magazine with Culling, chunks him away. It's a great disengage from Golden Guardians, but because they went down into the river instead of just straight down the lane, Prince's angle through that river actually gets quite a lot, right? It is those two flashes forced. But it may be a full tower going down on the bot side. It looks like Livers should be able to finish it off on the Cassante. Uh, you know, does have the Sheen procs there, you know, working away on that turret, will knock it down. So overall, I think still a good play here from Golden Guardians. You threaten the tower dive, you get the TP response. That means no one can actually answer Cassandra on the bot side. Then you just have to fully bail out, make sure you survive. Honestly, I've been really impressed with Golden Guardians so far, responding to FlyQuest, especially for Gory here in his first game. And as soon as I say it, it's FlyQuest making it painfully obvious that the caster curse is real. <laughs> they collapse on Gory and tear him apart. Gwen is immune, try to shuffle him away there, but had the edge of the shroud and Gory was not in it. Impact gets a shutdown as well. That is really, really big because he completed the Riftmaker. He already has uh, the Blighting Jewel as well. So going to be working in bottom lane. Licorice does have his Force of Nature completed. Void Staff completed for Impact there. So two item power spikes for both of these guys. The fight is going to go for quite a while, I would think. As you can see, Licorice go all out. He knows that Impact can just drain tank him through the damage of his tank form, so he's got to deploy the damage here. Sidesteps away from most of the five-shot needle, Whoa. and now he's continuing to try to fight him here with a Q3. Goes to the knockback. A little bit more damage might get it done, but Impact oh. out! Plays Licorice. Man, that you gotta be so careful going up against the Gwen. Every top laner has nightmares about these kind of plays, where Gwen gets the Riftmaker stacked up, gets the Conqueror stacked up, gets that final Q and so much healing comes through. So much damage comes through with that final true damage snip. Uh, that Licorice just gets chopped up. It looks like it was in his favor until that final moment, but Impact gets that kill and that is a big one as he's gonna continue to maintain pressure in that side lane now. You have a man that's been playing League of Legends as long as Impact, who's got his, uh, what, what was the way that he described it? His McDonald's World Championship Jack skin. <laughs> He has been playing this game so long. He knows so many of the matchups, so many of the thresholds, so many of those close fights. It's always impressive to see, but River is, uh, man, he is struggling here against the damage that Prince can output. They force the flash of the Golden Guardian's jungler as well as taking him nearly to death, meaning he has to go a full retreat. Yep. Uh, Spika used his ultimate there to actually try to interrupt the ulti from River, but he was just out of range, so it didn't actually stop the Poppycopter and he got rejected away, ends up kind of using his ultimate for nothing there. Maybe if he could have actually gotten that interruption, they would have been able to get the kill. Either way, 
River, no flash, sent back to base. Means FlyQuest and get another dragon here. So now is that third dragon for themselves, and they've opened up a 2.5k gold lead. So I would say, you know, they are extending enough of an advantage with this composition that they are really a threat here, but it's Impact now potentially caught out. Impact getting swooped back into the rest of Golden Guardians. He will drop the shutdown over to Gory. Did they go I Baron? Think that's exactly where they would want the money for Golden They're Guardian. Go Baron. They're going to threaten Baron. They know they got to try to push this forward, catch back up to FlyQuest, taking out the enemy top lane is a good way to do it, but now the pressure is on. Prince has a few seconds left on that culling cooldown. River goes in with a steadfast presence, looking to grab somebody, but he's about to die. Wild growth to keep him alive. Golden Guardians, I can see oh. what they wanted there, but they could not get the angle, and FlyQuest forces them back. Yeah, really good attempt. I wonder, had they waited another second or two longer before they peeled, and Licorice arrives, could they have found a better engage and, and really kind of slammed that home? Because now, FlyQuest are just going to do a counter Baron here. In fact, has TP, and he's up in 10. They're saying, oh, you're low? You want a base? No, you don't get to. River, you're at no HP. This is so risky for Golden Guardians. FlyQuest takes this here. The game's going to feel really rotten to keep playing. Impact's coming in with TP. Licorice separated from the rest of the team. Has to get away. Culling fired off. Most of the bullets don't connect. So Licorice still has a decent health pool to work with here. And so Golden Guardians do what FlyQuest just did to them. They push back enough to force them off the objective. Yeah, nicely done. I think both teams actually handling. The cast does an incredible amount of burst here on the Gwen. So it's, it can be very easy at times where you go into that all you try to scrap, and then all of a sudden you're getting chunked down. And now, oh, boom, the exhaust. Critical there from Stixie to try to keep Poofy oh. alive. But the needlework just sews him up a nice funeral suit. It's impact taking him down. And Golden Guardians now have to deal with a 4v5 with 15 seconds left before the Drake spawns. Yeah, you can just see how much pressure Prince is putting on them. The previous culling gets River really low, forces him back. Now he uses the Ignite, uses the Gale Force, finds who he gets him down low enough that Impact can just finish him off there. And Prince is just relentless trying to keep this pressure on. He's 1-1-2, one, one, and two, which isn't a, an incredible scoreline, but it's it's the pressure he's putting on. It's, it's the space he's creating for his team that makes him feel so much more impactful than that. I think he's just earned them the Dragon Soul for free. They're just not even going to try to contest. And this is literally what you said as the conditional for being able to play these short to mid-range AD carries in late game team fights. Your angle's got to be correct. You always have to find those moments where you do have a one good team fight on that Zeri. I mean, that's what Zeri is, right? Yeah. You you go from doing nothing to getting a pentakill, and then the game is. Yeah, this, this champion is a pentakill machine. You know, her, her whole kit is built around getting you those big plays. And this would be the time to try to go for it. It's Prince and Spica doing up the Baron. It is spotted by that blue orb. They can't give this up with the soul already taken. But are they too late? I think so. I don't think they have a whole lot of choice left in it, Isaac. You're going to see River miss the poppy copter. And now we got a problem as Gory's already dead with the culling over the wall and Spika finishes it off. You're going to see Stixay grab one back onto Impact, but the man's going to need to do a whole lot more. FlyQuest grabbed their second with River being taken out. Stixay has to flash away. He fires back, but Prince fires forward. A double kill of an illusion. Licorice will stand his ground, but how long can he do it? He's all out, but Spika's just keeping him distracted. Remember, he's built for MR. Stone plate active, keeping him alive a little bit longer. Black Cleaver is about to cut him to pieces, though. Spika just continuing the chase, going after this top laner of the Golden Guardians, while the rest of FlyQuest is in the base. It's a little Lulu versus all of FlyQuest, and Prince <laughs> wants to pad his stats, puts a bullet right in his back, and he's on a killing spree. That will do it. It was a valiant game from the Golden Guardians. They put up a fight, but FlyQuest is just built different. They'll take the win. 38 minutes in. FlyQuest continues their rampage through the LCS, and I think the hype is building for a potential FlyQuest versus Cloud9 matchup. Both these teams coming out here in week two and showcasing the power of some of these, these early game compositions, the power that you can utilize to really snowball the game if you're doing it very, very effectively. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's a nice change from last week where we saw all these people going for more of the early game stuff, just getting outscaled, you know, being able to, to close out these games is such